the Gardener, this is snow, and then they demolish them. Hey guys, welcome to our fantasy huddle. Lauren so how do you doing? Nice and Eisenberg. So glad to have you with us. None of this cupcake, 70 degree, 80 degree weather. Can you play in the snow, shape up, ship out? That's what the Patriots told the Arizona Cardinals. Matt Castle doing the job. Kurt Warner, not so much. Yeah, yet. Kurt Warner hurt a lot of fantasy owners mm -hmm. in their championship games in Week 16. In a big you know, way. This is something that we expected, though, because, you know, you look at Anquan Bolden missing this game. The Cardinals now have struggled two weeks in a row, so I don't know how much weather played a part. I know they changed their game plan a little bit, but you saw the way that they played against Minnesota two weeks ago when they were down 28 nothing in that game also. So I think the Cardinals just struggled a little bit. But let's forget about the Cardinals for a second. Let's look at the Patriots and Matt Castle. You talk about a quarterback who's really stepped up his game this year. Going to earn a nice paycheck coming into this offseason because he's going to be a free agent. So teams like Detroit, Minnesota, possibly Philadelphia, another team if they get rid of Donovan McNabb, St. Louis, Tampa Bay, Seattle, these are all teams could be looking at quarterbacks next year. And Matt Castle may be the hardest job in the NFL this year, replacing Tom Brady in week one. As we know, Brady was lost for the season with the ACL injury. And here comes Matt Castle. He deserves to be in the Pro Bowl ahead of Brett Favre. You know, you can make a case for several quarterbacks, Chad Pennington, Ben Roethlisberger, some other quarterbacks that should be there. Phillip Rivers also ahead of Favre. But Castle, you know what, could make a case that he's the MVP of the season. Listen, he's gotten Randy Moss the ball. He's gotten Wes Welker the ball. Kept these guys involved. Both had touchdowns against the Cardinals. You look at this makeshift running game now for the Patriots with Lamont Jordan scoring two touchdowns. Kevin Falk, Sammy Morris, these guys have all stepped up all season long, but Castle's the catalyst for this offense. And I'll tell you what, Lauren, if fantasy owners, if they picked him up, he may be the best waiver wire pickup of the season. You know, that's something that we're going to have on the site this week, cbsports.com, with the best waiver wire pickups. And it'll be interesting to see if it's Matt Castle as the best free agent. He's definitely the best quarterback free agent pickup this year. Just a fantastic season. Great story. He's going to earn himself quite a paycheck. Well, let's talk about Drew Brees and the Saints up by 35. Drew just keeps on firing. He's got a record break, Jamie. Yeah, it's really interesting because, you know, the one thing that you look for when you're talking fantasy production especially in week 16, week 17, when teams don't have a lot to play for, are, are their stars going to continue to perform? And you look at Breeze, he's 402 yards away from Dan Marino's record of single-season passing yards. And I think he's going to try He's going to try his hardest next week against Carolina to get that. So that's an interesting thing for fantasy owners if you're still playing into week 17 because now you know you can count on Breeze, you can count on Marcus Colston, Lance Moore, Devery Henderson. The running game for New Orleans has found its guy in Pierre Thomas. He's catching the ball in the backfield, had all, over 100 total yards. Uh, against the Lions, and I think you look at the way the Saints offense is going to play right now, you can keep everybody active in Week 17 against Carolina. Even though it's a tough defense, mm -hmm. the good thing is that Breeze is going to come out and try and get this record. So I don't know if he's going to get it. You know, it's interesting to see if he'll get the, to Marino's mark, uh, but he's going to try, and that's a good thing. Like you said, he has plenty of help. And what about Cedric Benson? You predicted him to do well, 171 yards rushing. Is he going to continue? Uh, you know, I think he's in line for a good game okay. because you talk about Week 17, He's facing the Kansas City Chiefs, and that's a great matchup for him. And we expected him to do well coming off that game against Washington. You know, had a good matchup against Cleveland. You know, it's, it's interesting if Cincinnati had this type of running game all season long that would have taken pressure off Ryan Fitzpatrick when he replaced Carson Palmer, would have opened things up in the passing game. But it's nice to see Cedric Benson finishing the season strong. You know, it's one thing that we look for toward the end of the season is guys auditioning for jobs going into next year. You know, Castle being one of those guys. Benson, another one. You know, guys looking for, for different uh, spots next year, not just contracts, but trying to stay with their same team. And I think you look at Benson, he's going to finish the season strong. So you're looking for guys, you know, at, we're at, this, we're at the point in the season now, you know, we're talking about Tennessee, Pittsburgh, Indianapolis. These guys are going to start to rest their starters in Week 17 because they really have nothing to play for, the Giants also. So you're looking for fantasy production from certain guys. If you're still playing in Week 17, Cedric Benson is definitely a running back. You can pick up if he's still available, and you can start him against the Chiefs. You knew he had the talent all along, and he's really starting to come out of his shell. Okay, the upswing continues for Antonio Bryant. Five touchdowns in the last four games. Oakland in Week 17, good news, right, Jamie? Oh, absolutely. You know, this is another guy. You talk about somebody playing for a job next year. You know, he was picked up off the scrap heap. You know, had all his off-field problems coming into the season. Tampa Bay gave him a chance. I got a chance to see him a little bit in the preseason. I like what I saw. It was just a matter of him getting an opportunity. Joey Galloway gets hurt. Here's Antonio Bryant. Wow. Talk about a guy that's really been a waiver wire addition and someone that's been, if you picked him up, you could be playing for a fantasy championship at this point because Bryant has assumed a number one fantasy wide receiver spot. He's going to finish among the top 12 in fantasy wide receivers in standard scoring leagues, and that's something we never expected. You know, the way that he's closing the season right now, doesn't matter who's his quarterback because I think you look at the way that he's played over the last few weeks, Fantastic production, like you mentioned, Oakland in Week 17. They did a good job against Andre Johnson uh, on Sunday in Week 16, but I think the way Bryant's playing right now, even if the matchup's tough, you still have to start him because he's going to play well. Plus, Oakland's coming cross country to Tampa Bay, so I think you still, Bryant, still put up good stats. Okay, and we're going to talk about Andre Johnson in just a minute, but some of you are already out of your fantasy championship. Some of you, not me. I wouldn't know anything about that. <laughs> 
Yeah, right. But if you're not, let's talk about, and if you are, let's talk about wide receivers going into next year. Yeah, you know, I think you look at the, the, the list of guys that are going to top Every wide receiver, you know, rank list, uh, it's going to vary because you talk about Andre Johnson's going to be the top of my list, but Larry Fitzgerald, stud receiver, as we know, Randy Moss, getting Tom Brady back. Some of these young guys, Brandon Marshall, Calvin Johnson, Marquez Colston, you know, some people are going to put various people at the top of this list. You know, I, I did the story on CBSSports.com where I mentioned the top 12 wide receivers coming into next season, and I got a variety of emails, you know, people even putting guys like Michael Crabtree, who hasn't even declared himself for the NFL yet, they think that he could be, you know, crack that list. You know, there, there are just a number of receivers that you can look at. The best thing about going into 2009, another story that I recently did was, I think you're going to see the running backs top the first round. You know, I think it's going to be all running backs because you're getting great value from some of these rookies in 2008. In 2009, we expect them to be better. You know, guys like Steve Slayton, Chris Johnson, Matt Forte, all these running backs are going to be back next year, and they've now creeped up into the first or second round. You look at D'Angelo Williams and the performance he had against the Giants. I mean, talk about a phenomenal finish to the season. Four touchdowns in that game, he's just getting better. Fantastic offensive line. Even with Jonathan Stewart there, he's still going to put up good numbers. So the running backs are going to dominate the first round, but the wide receivers I think you're going to see all throughout the second round. Reggie Wayne again is going to be in there, Anquan Bolden. There's just so much value. Steve Smith, all these great players, I think they're going to litter the second and third round. Wait, where's Antonio Bryant on that list? You know, that's interesting because I, I'm a little concerned about Bryant going into next year because now he'll have that contract. Some team will pay him. And that loses the motivation a little bit. Again, when you're talking about the end of the year, that's when you like to see these players step up. When you come into next year after they get paid, a little bit cause for concern. What about his quarterback in Week 17? You know, that's interesting because I think you'll see that, you know, even though Jeff Garcia left the game with a bloody nose, he's too tough of a quarterback. He'll be back. You know, when he missed the game two weeks, goes with a calf injury. The guys to keep an eye on, obviously, are Marshawn Lynch and Jason Witten. You know, Lynch left the game against Denver with a shoulder problem. It was bothering him coming into the game. Buffalo has nothing to play for. I don't know if he'll be out there against New England. That's something to keep an eye on throughout the week at CBSSports.com. Jason Witten, you know, had the problem, uh, left the game against Baltimore. I would expect him to play against Philadelphia in the final game of the season because, as we know, Dallas is still playing for playoff spot. Okay, if you are still playing for a championship, even if you are not, turn to Fantasy Football today live this Sunday, 11 o'clock. Good luck, guys. See you later.